Wow. Hey, didn't notice you there. This is a great day for a Sunday, isn't it? I don't get it. It's an especially great day to continue our big picture series where we're talking all about the life of Joseph. Even though his life sometimes seemed out of control, there were still things he could do and ways that he could see the bigger picture. And so we're applying those to our lives as we learn about him through this series when his life seemed out of control. Maybe you feel like there's not much you can control right now. Here's something you can control. Go ahead, show some love in the live chat. Go ahead, like the video. Go ahead, subscribe now. You're starting to feel a little more control. Starting a little, little bit better. All right. Good deal. Got some big news for you guys, okay? Next Tuesday, May 5th, we are having an online talent show. It is called Talents and Taco Tuesday. So what does that mean? It means we're gonna have people like you sending us videos. You gotta send us a video by this Thursday, April 30th, last day of the month, can't forget it. This Thursday, before then, send us a video of you singing a song, playing a song, doing a drawing, cooking us some delicious spaghetti, making some sweet trick shots, literally, Anything that you think might be a talent, we want to see it. Can't guarantee everything's going to make it in, but we want to see your video. We want to see your talent. You have something to offer, okay? So go ahead, send it to us. You can submit it by sending it to me at email at sam, S-A-M dot frangione, F-R-A-N-J-I-O-N-E. Been doing that since kindergarten, spelling out my name, okay? I know how to spell it at kensingtonchurch.org. So you can do that. Or if you have another way to send it to us through Instagram or maybe even through YouTube, however you can do it, send us the video, okay? And we wanna, that's gonna be Tuesday, May 5th at 7 p.m. Talents and Taco Tuesday, okay? We're gonna see you there. A lot of you guys might know Dave Wilson, who is our lead pastor at the Orient Campus, but you might not know, some of you do know, that there is a woman who holds down the fort and leads the way as well at our campus. Her name is Susan Wells. She actually came in and taught at Breakaway earlier this year. Um, she is awesome. I love her. I love her heart for Jesus. And she actually has a quick video because she was thinking of you guys, loves you guys so much, and wants to encourage you. So go ahead and check this out. Hey, Breakaway, how are you guys doing? Hey, I have been thinking a lot about passing time during this corona epidemic, and I'm wondering what you guys have been doing. I have this friend who always sends me the most encouraging things. And she just sent me a list of all the things she's grateful for during Corona. Like seriously, she sent me this list. She's from Boston, so she always says, the silver linings everywhere in this really cool Boston accent, which I'm not capable of doing. My boy's wicked smart. But it made me think like, what are some of the things that I'm grateful for right now? So I was gonna share my list with you guys. Here's a couple of things. One, I get to sleep in way later. Two. I don't have to wait for lunch. I can go to the refrigerator anytime, and I do, by the way. It's gonna be a problem later. Three, I get to hang out with my dogs all day, every day. We're going on walks, we're playing frisbee. It's been great. Hanging out with my family, doing puzzles. We haven't done that in so long. Honestly, there's just a lot of things that I'm grateful for. I think mostly, though, I'm grateful for an opportunity to slow down a little bit and just take some time to learn about some things I'm curious about. I've been Googling every topic imaginable. I actually think I might know how to play the harmonica. If I get one, I'm gonna try it. So I hope that you guys are just finding some things to do and just really looking at what are some of the positives in this. There's this great scripture in the book of James. It's actually in James, hold on, I'm grabbing it, one, and it's two through four. It says, count it pure joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. So think about the strengths that you're learning. Think about the creativity that you can step into and think through the lens of gratitude because you know what? There's always something to be grateful for, even during tough times. I hope that you guys are enjoying this Sunday stream and I'm gonna look forward to seeing you all really soon. Thank you so much, Susan, for sending us that encouraging video. We love you and we are grateful for you and for your heart for Jesus and the example that it is for all of us. So today we are continuing our big picture series, learning how to know and see the big picture even when it's difficult and what to do when we can't see it, right? So today we are learning to know that God is with us and how to know that God is with us even when we can't see the big picture. To help us do that, we've been looking through the life of Joseph. And if you didn't know something about Joseph is that he loved to play hockey. Okay, so maybe Joseph didn't love hockey, but it's only because it didn't exist yet. All right, so today, here's how we're gonna do this. You see these targets? Five targets. One, two, three, four, five in the middle, okay? I'm gonna have three locations to shoot from. At each of those locations, I have to make, I have to hit a target two out of three times. Now you're asking, how do you pick the spots? 
there's gonna be a spot that's five yards away, one that's seven yards away, and one that's 10 yards away. How am I gonna pick the spots though, and what's the consequence if I don't win? Well, here's how the game works. I got a special guest today with me. Yes, my lovely wife, Anne. Hi. How are you? I'm good. You're good, are you ready for this? I'm ready. She says she's ready, we'll find out. So, Anne is going to pick any, you're gonna walk five steps, gonna walk seven yards, gonna walk 10 yards, and wherever you pick is where I shoot from. Now, I said there was a consequence. If I don't hit two out of three, then I get pied in the face. However, if I do hit two out of three marks, you know what happens? You get pied in the face. Okay, are you guys ready? Here we go, let's do this. Bottom right. Shoot! Already two out of three. Ah, uh, top right. Shoot! <laughs> I'm doing better than I thought. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been tied in the face before. Whoa. Okay. Well, guys, it's it's tied one to one. You have one more round. And where are you gonna make me shoot from? Ten paces. Hello there. This is the spot. Yep. So we're gonna start bottom right. We're gonna go to top left. This. If I miss this, I lose. But if I make it, it goes to the third shot. Where are we going? Top left. Ooh, way high. Ever played hockey before? They use your head. It's all of it. It's all of it. Take it. Whoa. I lose. I don't like to lose. promised here are some videos of you who is the rebel child who made better grades in school who talked back more who is the funniest who is the most expensive child who has the most style who is the meanest who is the loudest who is the sneakiest who is more caring who is the overdramatic one who is the overprotective one You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for posting ridiculous videos week in and week out. I can always count on you for it. Well, today we do have a message of hope and truth, and we are talking about how to remember that God is with us even when it's hard to see the big picture, which is a time like now, right? So we're still looking at the life of Joseph, and there is part of his life towards the beginning of his story, at least his story that we know, where his brothers actually sell him into slavery because they hate him so much. Pretty extreme. Maybe you have a sibling that you don't like. Hopefully you wouldn't ever think of doing this to them. They faked his murder. 
They faked his death and then soaked that nice pretty coat that he had and soaked it in goat's blood. Don't even know where you get that. You'd have to go and take some of those fainting goats. Come on, buddy. Scoop. And there he goes. They're the little tiny pet goats that you do yoga with. But Joseph had some things in his life, right, that happened to him that he had no control over. And in those moments, it was crucial that he remembered that God was with him. So to help us talk about this, it's not just me giving the message, but we do have some help. If you didn't know who it is, I'm going to tell you right now. His wife has one of the weirdest maiden names that is more weird than my wife's maiden name that I've ever heard. And he also is my co-host on the show every week, which if you haven't figured out by now, it is Michael Bouchard. Welcome, Michael, to the Breakaway Sunday stream. How you doing? Great. Elizabeth's maiden name is Blood. Blood. She was Nurse Blood. Blood is Michael's wife's Elizabeth's maiden name. My wife's maiden name was Bull, like Dodge Elizabeth, Ram. Elizabeth was was Elizabeth. I mean, she was uh, Nurse Blood. That was her name. She was Nurse Blood. That's, you can't really beat that. That would be no. the only thing I would be better would be like Nurse. I can't think of anything right now. Maybe later. Doctor Surgeon. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, what we've got going on today, Michael? We are talking, like I said, about what it looks like to remember and to know that God is with us, even when we can't see the big picture. So we're just going to go ahead and dive right in. All right? Sounds great. Good deal. So what we have then is is this idea and this constance that God is with us, right? And so it's interesting, though, sometimes because the moments when we need to remember and to know that God is with us are sometimes the moments when we forget it, right? With The moments that where we're lonely or the moments that we're experiencing grief or loss or sadness or even despair. So, Michael, do you think, one, do you think that's true? Do you think that's accurate? But then, two, why do you think that might be? Uh, yeah, I think it definitely feels true. That's for sure. It reminds me yeah. of, like, when you go to take a test, and even if you've studied, you know, sometimes you have those days where you're like, I don't remember anything. You sit down and, like, the like the anxiety or all of the questions, like, start, like, um filling up your head and you get confused and you're like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't have what I need. Um, sure. so I think that's pretty normal to feel that way too, about, uh, looking for God's presence when things are chaotic. Um, okay. I think, I think one of the reasons that it hits us so hard, um, is, uh, it's kind of like we're, it's like we're trying to flex a muscle maybe that we haven't used as much. Um, and this might not be true for everybody, but I think for, for those of us in our community and where we live, I think yeah. this is going to be pretty normal for us to experience that um, if we haven't spent a whole lot of time trying to pursue God or trying to, to uh, be aware of where he is. Actually, Jesus talked a little bit about this, um, not directly, but indirectly. He often talked about the people in his the people um, who didn't have a lot. Um, yeah. he, he made reference to like God's kingdom and said that, that uh, those who are normally last are actually first in his kingdom. Uh, he also mm -hmm. talked about what we call the Beatitudes. Uh, blessed are the poor in spirit, you know, those who are sad. Uh, bless are, blessed are the, uh, the meek, the people that kind of get stomped on and step to the side. Um, blessed are those who don't have as much. Like, and when Jesus talked about this, I think it did a couple of things. First of all, it, it really kind of elevated the people who were often thought like they were without. Um, but I think there was another thing he was doing. It, it, it's, it's not so much that God loves a certain people more than he loves someone else. It's yeah. not about that. What he was highlighting is they often have an awareness uh, of God's presence that those who have or those who don't often go without um, don't naturally have. Um, sure. because when you always have a lot of needs, then you, you usually tend to realize you need God. Um, and I think, um, I, I think for us, we might, we might see this challenge a lot when we come across our sad times or when we come across times where we're really hurt or confused or we're having a hard time seeing God. Um, okay. it, it, it's not a bad thing, but I, but I think because we are so used to, to having most of our needs met, our needs are still the same, but we might have them met a lot. 
So um, it might make it harder because we tend to sometimes think like we get to where we're at on our own. Like all my accomplishments are mine. I've worked really hard. I've done all these things and we've needed God the whole time. And we've actually been relying on him um, around the gifts that he's given us. And we might, because we've, I think sometimes we think it's on us, that makes it harder for us to flex that muscle of relying on God. Um, So when things get tough, um, it's like we're trying to do something that we haven't done much of. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, that totally makes sense. It reminds me of a time when I was in college. My pastor at the time, he talked about a trip that he had taken to Africa where these people had so little from a material standpoint. And he said that they had little things, but a big God is how they worded it. Um, Because they had so little, they had to depend on God for everything. And to your point, we... uh, we don't have we have things, but the where we get into trouble is when we like you said is when we tend to think that those things come from us. When in reality, those that we need to view everything that we've been given as a gift from God. Um, and when we do that, I think that will help us realize that God is with us and God is working. Um, but when we don't, like you said, when we think that we've got this on our own, that's where we get we kind of tend to easily forget that God is is with us or that God is the one providing for us. And yeah, and I just want to make it clear, like no matter what we, you know, what our upbringing is or what kind of a life, what kind of life we have, we still have access to that though. Like we still have access to that faith that, that God is with us to that belief, that realization, right. That can come at any point. Um, you know, even if we haven't practiced a lot, we still can, we still can have it in the moment. Yeah. That's really, that's really true and important for us to remember. Uh, would you say Michael, like, is there, has there been a time in your life maybe where you needed someone to remind you that God was with you or on the flip side of that, that you found it helpful or someone found it helpful that you reminded them that God was with them? Uh, yeah, uh, just a recent example, which I know there's, there's many different kinds of examples that aren't as extreme as this one, but I just wanted to give you something that was kind of fresh for me. Um, just, uh, it was only like three months ago, um, that we got the news that my brother had passed away and there, there, there's six kids in our family and he was the last surviving male besides myself. So, um, it's just me and my sister now out of the six of us. And so we had to kind of kick it into gear and help make everything happen, like the funeral and stuff. And we all had to fly and drive across the country to, to do that. Um, so in the moment we just kind of um, just jumped right into it and helped get all the planning stuff done. And then once off the, once the funeral was done, then we went back home and it was in the quiet, right? In the quarantine and where all the thoughts started to creep in. Um, a lot of fears, um, a lot of uh, lies about myself that I was believing and had a lot of doubts about God, which, which is pretty normal and it's good to have doubts, but it's also good to sort through them. And I was just having a hard time doing that and having a hard time seeing God. So it, the the guys from my small group really um, really stepped up and, and and spoke into my life. They pursued me because I wasn't doing it. I was trying to do it on my own. So he uh, because I didn't know what else to do. And so they stepped in. They shared stories of what they've gone through. They were just present and asking me questions. And they weren't even in my house. They were doing it from afar. They were doing it on um, you know on Facetime. They were doing it. And they were uh, texting me. So. Um, from their own houses, they were doing that, and um, because of them, I was able to 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 slowly start to see where God was still moving and how God is still good and where He was leading me to in the future. Wow, that's really interesting, and I think so true for us to realize that remembering God's promises, like this is just one, right? That God is with us, but remembering God's promises in general, walking with God in general, isn't meant to be done alone. Mm -hmm. Um, Like the one of the best things that we can do, like I think of, of weightlifting and weight training, right? Like if for any of you that have ever done that, like, or seen it, maybe somebody that's bench pressing, right? So they're laying down, they're lifting maybe 100, 200, 300 pounds off their chest. Usually if you ever watch somebody doing that, Hopefully they have somebody that's called a spotter where they're they're making sure that they don't drop that weight on themselves. And I think of your example and this story from your life in the same way that these guys are there as spotters to help remind you of God's goodness, help remind you of his promises and the truth that he's with you in that season. And so uh, one way that we can make sure we're 
walking with Jesus, one way we can make sure we're remembering that he's with us is by intentionally putting ourselves in community. And that's why we have things like our Zoom groups. We know it's not the same as, you know, being able to gather in person on a Sunday morning, but it's the best thing we can do right now. And so we're glad that you guys are all all joining us here. Um, So Michael, next question for you is, has, or what are the things maybe that you've done that have helped you to remember that God is with you? Like if there's any disciplines or practices that you've done uh, for us to be able to learn from this morning. Yeah, I I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of different ways to train yourself. Um, And I guess this is what Paul would talk about with the renewing of our minds, um, reshaping how we see things to, to align it with, uh, with what God sees. Um, And I think there's a couple of ways that there's many ways to do that. Um, I'll tell you some of the ones I've seen and then also the ones I've used. Um, I think one that I've seen a lot of is an, what we would call active remembering. So it's practicing active remembering. So it's it's actually carving out time to sit down and think through the ways that uh, that God has been in your uh, in your past, because um, mm-hmm. that can also affect how we see his see him in the present and in the future. Uh, so it's it, you can do that by journaling and writing it out. You can draw it. You can make a PowerPoint. Um, there's lots of different ways. Or you can just imagine it. Just imagine uh, what you went through to remind yourself of that. Um, I think a, a second thing is people. So not not just remembering, but also bringing people in. Um, like you have a lot of people in your life that you could ask, not just well, you could ask them, what did they see? How have they seen God move in in your life? But also, how have they seen God move in their own lives? Just as much as we have a story, they have a story. Um, we can lift more together, right, Sam? We can always lift more together than than we can separate. I mean, I might not add that much, but I might help you lift, you know, at least five or ten more pounds. Um, so bringing in people, I think another part of that is like pouring out um, sometimes one of the best ways to find Jesus is to be Jesus, hmm. is to be wow. Jesus to other people who need it. I think another one, and this is more of a traditional one, is a physical reminders. This is why sometimes people wear crosses or rosaries or things like that, uh, or they put it in their house to to help them have visual reminders all the time. So that's something you could do. And then I think the other last one is to pull out of the pull from the future. Uh, do what Joseph did. Like Joseph was always dreaming. He didn't let go of the dreams that he had before. And he was always, even when he was in prison, he was still sorting through people's dreams. And he was still um, thinking about the future and what could be. Um, I think sometimes we're a little too scared to dream when we're in prison, when we're confined or when we're in the chaos. But sometimes that's exactly what we need to, um, and it's exactly what God wants to use to pull us out of it is to show us what he has for us or where he's guiding us next. Something that my wife and I do that I have come to love as a tradition is we get rocks every, every year on our anniversary and we write a word of how we saw God move in our life um, that previous year. And we take a picture of it, we set it by some water and we take a picture of it and put it in a frame in our house so that every time we see that picture, it's that it's that act of remembering, but it's it's kind of like the act of remembering along with um, something physical, like you mentioned. Mm-hmm. So that's that's yeah. really neat. Those are I've never heard that many different things presented like that. So that's hopefully one of those things at home for you guys resonates with you, and you can you could do that today. Um, yeah. So that's really cool. Last question before we before we end our time today, Michael, is just why is it important? Uh, we're talking about this, obviously, to remember that God is with us, but why is it important that we remember that he's with us? Yeah, um, because I think that if we if we don't do that, we could get stuck. Mm. Um, we could get stuck in not living in the full picture. We, um, we might get stuck in what we, what we think and feel right now, yeah. and... Um, and, and realizing that God is in control and looking for his presence and inviting other people in is what helps us see a better, fuller picture of where things actually are. One more illustration for you. Um, yeah. Uh, because I believe that no matter who we are, no matter how old you are, you can start doing this now. Um, y'all know I've been playing Fortnite. Or some of you know I've been starting to play Fortnite. I'm, I'm late to do. the game. I'm late to this, but I'm having a lot of fun and I'm actually doing fairly decent. Um, but what I'm realizing, what sets Fortnite apart from everything else is the building. Because there's tons of first per- uh, of first person shooters out there, right? Like fun games, you, know, you go blasting aliens and stuff. Um, but this one's James different. And it, 
And I think it's different because uh, because of the building. And uh, I realize that the people who win a lot are the ones who are really quick at building. And I am not that. Uh, so for me, I, and I also realized for me to get better, I've got to spend time. Um, I've got to spend time practicing. So I've been taking some time to switch into creative mode and start learning how to build quickly and train my fingers to, you know, Dang. do the right muscle movements. So that way in the middle of the chaos, I'm not just like standing there in the middle of eight people waiting for, to figure out who's going to take me out. I usually um, just jump around. I jump up and down <laughs> to try and keep my, my... Well, then I can't <laughs> aim. So then I, do, then I can't aim at anything, right? Um, so, but time spent practicing has yep. made me better in the moment. Uh, so you can still build in the moment. And it's like that with Christ. You can still rely on him in the moment. You can still find him. You're going to need help to do that. Um, but you can still find him. Um, but also no, any time spent practicing will always help you for the moment. Any time spent preparing will always help you for the moment. So you can rely on faith now. You can have faith now. Yeah. But also make sure that when things are a little less chaotic and a little less crazy, use some of your time to do that so that you're prepared and better prepared for when the craziness comes. I love that, man. That's so good. I think that's good for, for all of us to be reminded of. I think that's good for me to be reminded of just to, to know that in the it's important to train now. Um, now is a time that we can train, but it's also important to train later, to flex those muscles, to work those muscles later because exercising our faith uh, in such a way will help us when we get into the moments of, of chaos, remembering that God is with us will help us when we get into those moments that we talked about at the beginning where we need to remember that God is with us. So mm-hmm. um, I love that, man. Thank you so much, Michael. Yeah, for, thank you. For uh, spending time with us today. I hope that everybody at home was able to take something away from just your wisdom and the life experience that you shared with us. So thanks, man. Well, before we before we end our time today, one of our leaders shared her story with, with us, and I, I wanted to just share it. It was short, but I think so true and important for us to know right now about the constant that God is in all of our lives. So go ahead and check out this video from Chrissy. To me, Jesus is love. Jesus is hope. And I think most importantly, Jesus is a constant. He is never wavering, he never changes, he is always the same. And I think in our world right now where everything is just turned upside down and so crazy, I think that is what is help keeping me sane, is that he is always the same. Every time I go to him, I feel like I hear the same thing from him and it's just a bundle of love and hope. Um, And for that, I am so, so grateful. Okay, everyone. We want to know how you are going to remind yourself this week that God is with you in this time and all the other times too. You could do so many different things at home to connect yourself with him. Write a Bible verse on a bunch of sticky notes and put them around the house. Do some journaling and a planner. You could even just take some time by yourself, sit and pray and connect with God. Really, there's so many different kind of things that you could do. You could just, just need to think of a way that works for you and go and do it. Make sure that you remind people around you and people that you connect with also to do it because it's true for everyone that God is with you always. Reminder that this Thursday, April 30th is the deadline to submit your video for our Talents in Taco Tuesday night that's coming up on May 5th or Cinco de Mayo. We're really excited about this opportunity and we really want you guys to showcase your talents and your hobbies, hidden treasures, talents, whatever you got. Um, And it could be so many different things. Whatever it is you guys have talents to do, we want to see them and we want you to submit them by this Thursday, April 30th. You can go ahead and email those to sam.frangioni at kensingtonchurch.org. Now it's time for our small group Zoom chat. We've really enjoyed having you guys join us for these small group chats. And we know that other people in your small group and even your small group leaders have really loved the opportunity to get to chat with you guys on Sundays. It's just been a really great opportunity for us to take what we've learned on the screens and really be able to talk about it, find ways to apply it, and then do it. So make sure that when you guys log on, go ahead and put your grade at the beginning of your name so that Sam can get you placed in your small groups easily. And this week, Sam has a really good challenge for you guys. If he can't get you guys into your small groups in five minutes or less, then next Sunday, he's going to eat a really, really gross smoothie. 
I don't know, maybe you guys will get to pick the ingredients that go into it. Either way, we're really excited to have you guys join us in Zoom Group.